I would argue that knocking off kingpins is successful in as much that it disrupts activity, but that the underlying current is not dramatically altered. If you look at uh, the kingpin tactic through uh, the lens of counterinsurgency, um, you'll see that, uh, it, for instance, the French in their, their counterinsurgency in Algeria against the Algerian independence movement were very successful in locating and arresting or killing uh, senior members of the, um, the uh, independence movement, but did not stop the movement cold. Why? Because there was a deeper underlying current of, of dissatisfaction with France uh, that really couldn't be staunched until France admitted that it could not run the country anymore uh, and that it did not want to manage uh, the, the war there uh, and that the French people had essentially tired of doing the job. Uh, so there's a similar problem with the kingpin strategy on narcotics, which uh, is now exacerbated by the legislation passed in the United States in the last election, um, where, uh, yes, you can knock off the kingpins, but the demand for narcotics in the United States doesn't go away. And uh, so someone will enter the market for every person uh, the Mexican government or another government takes out of the market through violence. Uh, so knocking out the kingpins, either arresting them or, uh, or killing them, uh, works in as much that uh, you're, you're taking these big names out of the puzzle. Uh, you know, another analogy is uh, the deck of cards that the United States took into Iraq uh, in 2003 um, in saying, these are the important guys in the Iraqi government. Uh, these are the people we'll catch, and, and once we have these people caught, Iraq, uh, the Iraq we didn't like is no more. Well, uh, even after Saddam Hussein was caught, and many of his other kind of top-level cronies were were uh, in U.S. custody or killed, uh, the Iraqi uh, um, insurgency continued to thrive. Why? Because many in Iraq were dissatisfied with the presence of the U.S. and, and the coalition there, and only uh, have things gotten quieter by, by embracing different tactics, by, by going realizing that the bad guys we thought were the bad guys um, weren't necessarily the ones who were changing the game on the ground. So, yes, I, I see... Going after kingpins is having some utility, but um, it doesn't affect the underlying uh, condition. It's a, it's a treatment of a symptom rather than a fundamental treatment of the disease or malady. Why does the kingpin strategy work and why is it good? The kingpin strategy was developed in the early 1990s by DEA after an analysis of targeting strategies uh, across the world. The uh, business uh, cycle of drug trafficking was reviewed and it was determined that uh, there was uh, a number of critical nodes including production, transportation, distribution, and recapitalization of the enterprise. And then around, uh, around those uh, critical nodes was uh, an even more critical factor called command communications and control. Command communications and control uh, are the aspects of those business uh, activities uh, where the leadership resides, where the people actually do that work. So it was reasoned that uh, by uh, eliminating through arrest uh, a number of uh, leadership fig figures that uh, the organization would, would be disrupted and dismantled. So any time that you remove a leadership figure, it does cause significant disruption to an organization. So that system was um, exported to Colombia and it worked in the removal of the Cali and Medellin cartels and has also been uh, adopted in Mexico where a number of uh, cartel leadership figures have been removed. There is a corresponding aspect of that because the Kingpin strategy assumes that you're working from the top down but uh, it's also very useful to have a bottom-up approach, and that is the social programs and other activities that go hand-in-hand -hand with removal of uh, criminal elements. So that's, uh, that, that's how it has worked, and it has worked very effectively. It's had some positive effects and some negative effects, but uh, overall, it's an effective strategy.
There are essentially two root causes to drug-related violence uh, that must be addressed. Kingpin strategies are a good way to fight drug trafficking organizations, but they're only one component, as Tony Payan argues, of a much broader strategy. And the way I look at the two root causes that should be addressed if you really want to fight drug-related violence and address this issue is the global prohibition regime and state capacity. The global prohibition regime provides the profits for drug trafficking organizations and eliminating those profits will go a long way toward weakening them. They may diversify into other activities, but when they diversify into those other activities, often which rely on violence, for example, extortion, racketeering of all kinds, they trigger a strong state reaction, what I call the state reaction model uh, of illicit network resilience. And the more they go into that, those types of activities, the more the state will spend to remove them because they challenge the fundamental notion of what the state is. The question of the drug kingpin strategy is an interesting one. It has been used effectively as an anti-terrorist uh, tactic or strategy in the war on terror. I'm not sure that we can say that it is equivalent or it has the equivalent uh, effectiveness in the war on drugs. Why? Because when you go after the drug uh, kingpins in the war on drugs, uh, you essentially are targeting individuals that can be very easily rep replaced. There's always new lieutenants that rise up to power that have acquired the experience and the skills over time and can take over the organization. In fact, the drug kingpin strategy has demonstrated that it often creates a greater level of violence because it creates cleavages among the different lieutenants within a single organization when the main capo is gone and they begin to fight between or among themselves to replace the main capo and uh, the other parties or members of the cartel have to take sides and they begin to eliminate each other, uh, essentially adding to the number of deaths in these intra-cartel organizations. The drug kingpin strategy also creates a greater amount of violence between cartels because when a cartel is sufficiently weakened uh, other cartels may see this and as an opportunity to uh, overtake uh, the corridors, the smuggling corridors, or segments of the organization of the other cartel. And this also creates inter-cartel violence. Nonetheless, I think it is important to target these individuals because they are the brain power, they are the organizational leaders, and it does weaken these organizations. But we need to make sure that this strategy is not employed exclusively and that we address the entire chain. This is only one component of a much larger strategy in dealing with drugs.